Hello, in this video, we are going to start with the graphics pipeline. So for the code, we're literally adding like a few lines of code and we're just going to be discussing what the graphics pipeline is doing. Okay, so the code, first of all, if you go to init Vulkan, where we initialized Vulkan, we're just gonna put create graphics pipeline, takes no parameters, and we're gonna be implementing this bad boy. So if you just scroll down, keep scrolling, what we'll do is we'll put it after we did the create image views in the previous video. That should be after this, up here, after this one. Here we go. It's gonna put void create graphics pipeline and there we go so we should be able to give this a run again we're not implementing this method we'll be doing that over the next few videos and yeah we're just making sure there's no errors there's gonna be a little validation error but that was from before as well so that's that's fine okay so there's no errors in terms of building it we're all good to go now what i'm going to do is open up this image i've got called pipeline svg and I'll explain what the pipeline is effectively doing. Let me try and put it into the middle by doing this. So yeah, it's in the middle now. So this is the graphics pipeline. This is a very sort of minimal way of looking at it. And this is basically used to draw stuff. Obviously it can be used to draw our first triangle. So it's a sequence of events that actually take you know the vertices of our object and the textures of basically how it looks uh, of the object and they turn them into pixels and they put them into the render target so let's explain what each little thing does so the input assembler like this little section right here it basically gets the raw vertex data from the buffers that we are able to specify can also use index buffer as well to repeat certain elements and that will allow it to not duplicate the vertex data you know itself so in the vertex shader stage this is a basically run for every single vertex and generally speaking it applies transformations to turn vertex positions from model space to screen space and it also passes per vertex data down the graphics pipeline next stage which is tessellation so that so all of these orange ones are shaders the tessellation shader basically allows you to divide the geometry based on certain conditions basically to increase the meshes quality and this is really used to make surfaces like you know brick or if you have a floor and there's meant to be rocks on it you know look not flat you know when you go near it you, i'm sure you've seen in games especially older games even mod some modern games you look at it and they just look flat even though it's like it's not meant to be flat it's like a brick wall the next stage which is the geometry shader is run on any sort of primitive object so triangles line points that sort of stuff and it, it can discard or output more primitives that basically come in so this is kind of like the tessellation shader but it's a bit more flexible it is not used in today's applications that much because the performance of it essentially is not very good as except for you know certain graphics you know cards so really doesn't, you generally don't deal with this but again it's something worth mentioning the rasterization stage basically you know gets the primitives and turns them into fragments so these are basically pixel elements that they fill on the frame buffer and as you can see they start to look like what you would usually see on a screen the fragment shader effectively just figures out you know the texture you know how it should look the color for example and handles lighting as well and that's basically what it does so the so this stage is about the structure of the object this stage is essentially how it should look 
the color blending stage essentially applies operations to mix different fragments that map essentially to the same pixel in the frame buffer fragments can you know simply overwrite each other add up or be mixed upon you know transparency and then you know finally it goes to the frame buffer so that's the graphics pipeline like i said we're not doing much code in this video over the next few videos we'll be implementing the graphics pipeline in vulcan if you have any questions feel free to join the discord group there's over 4600 members now we'll be hitting 5000 in no time and there's the vulcan channel where you can post all your questions there's also a link in the description there's a link for that if i didn't mention it there's also a link in the description to the github page which has all the source code from every video along with working runnable projects so that's it thanks for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next video